with Board Game Geek here with Adam from Funko Games. And today we get to look at Pan Am, the board game or the game. Now, I guess I really want to know why Pan Am? How did this even start? Because it's it's random. It's awesome, but it's random. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, first of all, hi, I'm Adam. I'm from Funko Games, the marketing manager. Um, we are into hour two of our <laughs> our Funko Games releases. Um, so Pan Am, um, uh, right now they are a licensing company, essentially. So uh, anyone who isn't familiar with the Pan Am Airlines, they were the premier uh, flight experience. This is when you would dress up to go on a plane you would be served a meal on a plate uh, with silverware. Um, you know, all the stewardesses are known for their iconic um, style. There have been movies and TV shows based on Pan Am, um, but essentially uh, Jess, who you just saw presenting Godzilla and um, Back to the Future, uh, ran into the Pan Am licensing group at Licensing Expo. And the second huh. they met, the second everything came together, we knew that this was a game that we wanted to make. Um, and so it's actually nice. been a few years in development. Uh, we started off, um, you know, we are a design studio. So if anyone isn't familiar with Prospero Hall, uh, we are a design studio. We're based out of Seattle. Um, our studio used to be called Forest Brazen Creative until Funko purchased us last year. Um, so now we're finally coming out with all the games that we've been working on. So excellent. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are a design studio, but this game is actually um, uh, Horrified, which won a few uh, Dice Tower Awards and was very well okay. recognized. Um, this is the same designer, the same lead designer. We are a co-op, but same lead designer, uh, Peter Lee, who you might know from uh, some other well-known games as well. Uh, so that's kind of the origin of Pan Am. Um, we wanted to take this license and really pay homage to that glamorous style, right? So you can see the board there. It's this really iconic vintage art. Yes, uh, striking. Uh, yeah. the, the box cover is stunning. The world map is a unique uh, perspective that they would use in airline aeronautics, aer right? That's the word. <laughs> um, that sounds right. <laughs> and all the... Um, Art that we're using is an homage to the Pan Am um, posters and luggage tags and things like that. So it's really a, a striking title. I, I think um, the studio did an amazing job paying tribute to that that era, making you feel like you're. Yeah, I mean, I really love I love the look of this game. I I, I learned it last night, so I'm I'm like ready to talk about it. I, I mean, the art is yeah. just wonderful. So I'm glad you pointed it out because I personally really like it. <laughs> yeah yeah it all it has that like gorgeous antiquing around the box um yeah we're we're very happy with this game <laughs> very cool um do you want to like go over a little bit like how it works or how many players and all the time and everything just briefly before getting into how it, you know each turn actually will play out just like yeah. a general overview yeah so general overview it's a two to four player game uh, it plays in under an hour. Um, so it's a uh, turn-based worker placement and bidding and auction and route claiming game. So it's kind of, you know, the best parts of a number of different well-known um, play styles all put into one that is very approachable. Uh, so it's it has the depth that the hobby gamers are looking for. And also right now this is available in Target it's gonna to appeal to a broader audience as well. Um, I, yeah. I know that some people are saying it's already their game of the year, which we are very proud of. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the general overview. You know, it is, uh, I believe it's ages 13 and up, 10 and up, 12 up, average together. <laughs> um, so that's the, you know, the general overview. So do we wanna walk through a turn? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. So it looks like you already have everything set up, which is fantastic. Um, the only thing are the airports over by the letter A. They might just be off screen. The airports. They are these guys. Hmm. So, yeah. Which is fine. I, I, 
Yeah. There you okay. Go. So the, yeah. So they're just off screen. Perfect. Um, so the person who last was on an airplane goes first, and I think right now uh, <laughs> it's going to be, uh, you know, I'm always the first player because I went to New York Toy Fair right before everything shut down. <laughs> um, so that's who first player is, but it looks like you gave it to Gray, uh, which is fantastic. So starting with the first player, everyone is going to take their engineers and the number of engineers you get in the game varies based on the number of players. So everyone's going to take turn placing their engineers and there's five places that you can do it. Uh, there's A, B, and C. A, B, and C are all auctions. So only one person, one player, is going to win each of those auctions. So uh, on A, every round, at, uh, at most, one airport will be won based on the auction. There are four destination cards, so each one is its own auction. So one person can get all four if they put all their engineers on each one, or it can be divided among the other players. Then you can bid for the purchase of planes. So there are four different sizes of planes in the game. Uh, one really neat thing about this title is it actually um, is a little bit of a history lesson as well. So it starts in the 20s, <laughs> ends in the 70s at the height of Pan Am. So you can actually see as technology advances, we get access to bigger planes, which can fly longer routes. Yeah. So at the beginning of the game, you just have the two smaller planes, the trimotor and the clipper. Um, so you can uh, place an engineer there, or you can go to claim a route, which is D. Now, any number of people up to the number of spaces can um, place their engineer in D. And then when at the end of the round, we're resolving everything, the players resolve and get to claim routes in the order that the engineers were placed. So if you have mm -hmm. a route that you know you need to claim, you might want to put your engineer there first. And then they go yeah. in order after that. And then there's the directive cards, which every player starts with two destination cards. And destination cards are what give you landing rights in different cities and one directive card. Now, directive cards are secret. They are um, played when the card tells you to play. So some of them are at the end of the game. Some of them are during certain steps. But you'll always want to keep that secret until you use it. Uh, and destination cards are face up. So you can kind of spy on what other players are doing, see if they're about to claim a route that you need. Maybe you sacrifice, like let them take a route so you can get something better. Lots of strategy there. Um, but that is E. So um, if you place one of your workers in E, you get a directive card that you can use later in the game. And then those workers stay on the board and they get priority yeah. access in the next round. So they will which be which is the, really uh, important. First. <laughs> Very important. It, you know, if you're not first player, you might want to make sure you're there to get exactly what you want in the following round. Yes. So that's the, how the turn works. So you know, there actually is in the rule book. Um, so first of all, Becca Scott did an incredible how to play video. If you haven't seen it yet, um, go check it out. She actually we sent her the Pan Am stewardess uniform. So she's in the regulation <laughs> stewardess uniform, the correct lipstick and hair, because they were very particular uh, about everything that the stewardesses wore. And she did it out of her home and it's stunning. Anyway, go watch it. Um, but in the rule book, there's actually a stewardess that will walk you through your first couple um, rounds in your first game to make sure you're starting off well. So we make the game very approachable. But it cool. is smart in your first round to look at what destination cards you have and see what routes you could claim. So claiming a route early on is very important. So, fantastic. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't have the map memorized, but I see <laughs> Gray has two purple cards and they're gonna go first. So with two purple cards, they will for sure be able to get a route along one of the purple cities. So taking a quick step back, talking about routes and how to claim them. Exactly, thank you. Um, uh, so there are, you need landing rights. 
makes sense, right? You're building your yeah. airline. You need permission to land in the uh, starting city and the destination. So there are four ways you can have landing routes. We talked about airports. If you buy and place an airport, you always have landing routes in that city, always and forever. If you're holding a destination card for a specific city, you have landing rights in that city and you actually get to keep that card as long as you want. If you discard a card that is the same color, so let's say uh, Gray has those two purple cards, with those two pur purple cards, if they discarded both of those, they could go from any purple city to purple city along that route. And then the fourth way uh, to get landing rights is if you discard any two cards of the same color, so again, Gray has those two purple cards, it makes it very easy to talk about these examples. If both of those are discarded, then you get landing rights in any city in the world. It doesn't need to be purple. So yeah. when you go to claim a route, you'll want to think about what route you can, you can claim based on what landing rights you have. Ideally, you so, don't want to spend your cards so you can save them for future turns. So you want to exactly. try and get them to line up if you can. Exactly. Like, the purple city yep, to purple so airports, city on the board. Airports are great because they prevent you from having to discard a card and then going from a route that you have the card for is always premier for that exact reason, right? You're, you want to hoard as many of those cards as you can up to the hand limit. Yeah. Um, just real quick, uh, you didn't really yeah. touch on why we're doing all of it. Maybe you want to just explain yep. how you win the, the game. The story of so the game. <laughs> <laughs> so we are fledgling airlines um, competing with Pan Am. Now we're all starting at the same time in the 20s. And at that time, Pan Am was not that large. So we're all starting at the same time. The reality is we know from history, Pan Am is inevitable. Pan Am will be the premier airline by the 70s. So right. this is almost like if you think about Silicon Valley when you're developing an app, you want to be purchased by Pan Am. And so the player at the end of the game that has the most stock in Pan Am wins the game. So yes. we are building up our own routes, our own fleet, our own uh, kind of airline empire with the expectation that Pan Am will buy us. <laughs> Nice. So, so yep. getting back to the roots, you want to place your roots. So hopefully it ends up in a pattern that they will eventually want to purchase from you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, um, you know, actually let's just kind of dive in and take a turn yeah. and, you know, we'll be able to explain some of these things because at the end of every round, Pan Am expands. So that's um, yes. always a, an exciting moment. So the first <laughs> thing that happens, and actually every player card has the turn order on it, which makes life very simple. So you're never guessing as where you are. So the first thing that happens is you reveal the first event card, the round one event. Yep. So there are actually many versions of each round's event card. So at, during setup, you're randomly choosing uh, each round. So the story is always a little bit different, but these are all historical events. So the first round is the foundation of Pan Am. So what we're going to do is there is the stock price. So I mentioned that you want to buy stock. The stock price is going to start at four. So down in the bottom left corner of the board, you're going to take the Pan Am marker and put it on four. So at the end of the round, it costs four monies to buy stock in Pan Am. Now throughout the game, that, that will go up and down according to these event cards. And then the expansion has the little die symbol. So at the end of the round, Pan Am, this is the Pan Am die, is going to expand one time. So at the end of the round, at the, at, yeah, at the end of the round, you're gonna roll the Pan Am die and that'll tell you how Pan Am is gonna expand. So this is round one, stock price is four. Pan Am is gonna expand once at the end of the game and Gray gets to go first. So in turn order and clockwise order, you'll each take turns placing one of your engineers. So if Gray wants to, cause yeah, Gray has those two purple cards. Um, so prime, prime positioning to be able to claim a route immediately. Now, um, red would be next. 
So I don't know, uh, oh, there we go. So red might also want to try to claim a route um, early on or go to one of the destination card bidding tracks and try to get more cards to expand their landing right options. Claiming a route early on, if you're able to, is always great as well. That's so, really expensive. Uh, when you bid, <laughs> you'll actually start at the lowest number, which is zero. So all destination cards start as free. Somebody outbids you, now they have to pay for it and you get your worker back to place somewhere else. Can you choose to go higher though? Absolutely. If it's a card that you absolutely need, you can bid six, which is the highest number. You'll pay six money for it, but you're guaranteed to get it. And then no one can outbid yeah. you for it. Same with the airports, same with the planes. If you put your uh, engineer on the highest number, you get it, but you got to pay for it. I think somebody would go to the airport because in my game, everybody wanted airports. <laughs> airports are phenomenal, especially you uh, when you buy them, you'll always have to pay for them. They don't start as free. The cheapest that you'll ever get them for is three monies. Um, but you place them in a city and you have permanent landing rights in that city. So you'll want to put it in a city that has a lot of different routes coming to it that you'll be able to expand from. So it looks yeah. like we're going around the board. Um, Whose hands am I watching? Lincoln. Lincoln, hi Lincoln. Thank you for, Nikki, for being our you're watching actually, Nikki's It's actually hands. Nikki's, Nikki, Nikki's hands. She's been, been, she's been hands most of the time. I'm the hand oh. lady. Hi, <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought uh, I saw Lincoln earlier in the picture. <laughs> Lighting okay, things so on, but Nikki's, Nikki's got smaller doing a hands than job me. Going around, placing one engineer <laughs> as we go. So yep, directive cards are great to get. They give you, uh, you know, special abilities that you'll be able to use at random times. So we'll just go around and place everything. If you want to do an example of outbidding somebody, either at an uh, at A for an airport or B for a destination card, um, we can kind of show how that works, right? So you would go on a higher number. Then I think that's gray. That was the first one. Green. Is that? Green, green, green. Is so green will green actually get outbid. that um, worker back. Green and yellow. So uh, yeah, yeah so, so green was outbid. So you'll actually pull that one back to green's board and they'll be able to place it somewhere else. So if you get outbid, you don't lose that ability to do something that round. Do I place so it right now when I get knocked off? Uh, you, you'll always stay in turn order. Okay. So if you get outbid, if you get knocked out uh, at the end of the round, you're probably going to be able to place a couple uh, different ones in a row. A cheap plane is good. Yeah, that would be good. Cheap planes are always great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cheap planes, um, cheap airports, free routes. Cheap that's what destinations. You yeah, <laughs> that's what you want. Yep, um, so what's good, what, what's good about go routes, around. yeah, what's good about getting routes and uh, airports is that they also provide a little bit of income. So you get a little bit of income from getting these things down in the round. So it's thing, something to think about because if you get that airport, it will provide you one income for the rest of the game. Absolutely. So claiming routes and building airports, exactly like what you said, will give you high, uh, more income uh, during the end, during the end Pan Am phase, and your income, you get money, and that's how you buy stock. Yeah. So this is great. Yeah. We're placing, we're placing, we're going around, <laughs> we're getting airplanes, we're getting routes. Yeah. We're yeah. getting destination cards and airports. So looks once like everyone has placed board. all of their engineers, which it looks like we are about to do. I see yellow yep. has one last engineer. Yeah, that's good. Fantastic. So now once everyone has placed, um, so that was phase two of the round, that's the engineer phase, we go into resolution and we resolve these five areas in alphabetical order. So starting with A, yellow gets to buy an airport for five. How much, how much money is it? I believe five, that's five. Five yeah. money. Ah, ah, ah. So they'll <laughs> um, spend five money to the bank. 
and immediately and I, they'll be able to place their airport anywhere on the board. So I would say an adjacent to New Delhi. Card. Is it adjacent to New Delhi or Lisbon? That, yeah, that would be, would be a great a strategy spot. because then yes. when they claim their route, they won't need to discard any cards. Yep, yep. you get the worker back. Now we go to the destination cards. So it looks like they're all going to get claimed. Red gets three free destination cards. Good job, Red. Wow. Good job, Red. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Seth. Um, yeah. And then Gray will have to pay for their purple. But man, Gray is going to rule that it. section of the board. Yep. Yes. <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> And then as destination cards are claimed, you actually reveal new ones. So we'll want to refill those immediately. And then that might just inform your strategy for the next round. Had any of those destination cards not been claimed, you put one money on it to maybe entice somebody the next round to bid on that destination. So then we move over to sync. We buy some planes. Um, so green is going to get a free tri-motor, which is the smallest plane. Nice. Gray is going to have to pay for their, um, not clipper. Yeah, their clipper. Clip, yeah. Two. Now, the difference between the planes is the distance that they can fly. So the tri-motors can only fly the shortest routes. And it's kind of hard to see on the board, but each route has a value. They, they one say, through four. They say one, two, three, four. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and that's how far they can go. So a tri-motor can yeah. only go one, clipper can go two, um, and then the jet can go four. But we won't get the jet until later in the game when that technology was developed. So then we go to D. Now we get to claim some routes. My guess is purple is going to do, uh, or sorry, gray is going to do a purple route using their, maybe their airport. Oh, no, gray doesn't get they an airport. An yellow airport. Did. But gray has yeah. all those purple cards. So depending on what they Do any are, of them match you can up, either claim a Nikki? route of the cities that you have the cards for, or by discarding. Now, so on I the map, is that. there any connection between Istanbul and Tangier, or Rome to Tangier, or Rome to Istanbul? I can't quite read them. So I'm not quite sure. Rome. Yeah, perfect. Beautiful. So you could. So you could what number is that? Is that a one or a two? I think it's a one. It's a yeah. one. So you can use your um, tri-motor, which is the small plane. Or later in the game, it might be uh, important, but you can use a bigger plane to fly a smaller route, but not the other way. You generally so, don't want to do that because... if you can avoid it. <laughs> oh, sorry? <laughs> you probably don't want to do that if you can avoid it. If you can avoid it. But maybe later yeah. in the game, you know Pan Am's about to buy you. You just got to get a plane on the board. Not the worst thing. Yep, yep. So because no. you have those two city cards, you get to keep them. You don't need to discard them. You have landing rights in both those cities. So when you place a plane, and actually I missed this when yellow placed their airport, your income goes up. So purple, uh, sorry, gray's income is now one because they have a one value route claimed. Yellow's yep. income is one because they have one airport. Yeah. Now, if you claimed a two, three, or four route, your income goes up by that number. So if you have a jet yeah. and you claim a four route, your income goes up by four. Okay, so that was Gray's okay. route. Now yellow gets to claim a route. They're probably going to use that airport that they paid for. <laughs> yes. So they have Lisbon probably and to New Delhi. New Delhi. Yep. The suspense. Where is yellow? Is there, go? there? There's a. I think there's a one route on the. Yeah. Isn't that? Yep. Where? Beautiful. Where is New Delhi? Yeah. Yeah. So that's so New Delhi. The, in so because you have the airport. card and the airport, you could throw a plane there and not have to discard anything. So you're yeah. actually going to place it on the route, not on the city. So airports go in yep. the cities, and then the airplanes go between the cities. <laughs> I'm going to take a second. And your Volume income goes up. Income by one. Yeah. The yellow's income Can is now green two. Do anything. One airport, one, one, one route. 
Green, have San Francisco and Paris. Can we do anything with that? I'm not sure. Um, so obviously San Francisco and Paris don't connect, but is there an area on the board where maybe blue and purple line up and we can discard those cards? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think there is. Um, cards are in the, in the obscuring, but. So blue and purple, uh, so those yes. Are... Exactly. So, so um, actually, if you go between Gandir and Reykjavik. Yes. Yep. So that is a blue and a purple. So you could discard those two cards to get landing rights in the matching color cities. Yep. So you would yep. discard those. And then you and can place your two, two plane. your clipper, along that route. And uh, you go up twice on the income. Yes, income goes up by two. Yeah. And now we're in cool. the directives. So we've gone all the, all the way A through D. Now we're in directives. Mm -hmm. So green and yellow in order, because that's the order that they're placed, get to take a directive card, but they leave their engineers on the board because they'll get priority access and get to place first next round. Yep. Beautiful. So then we we've resolve. gone through the resolution phase. So now we're into the Pan Am phase. So the first thing that happens in the Pan Am phase is if we remember that event card that we saw earlier, it had one die roll for Pan Am. So we're going to take the Pan Am die and roll it one time. Hit me one time. Bam. Ooh. So those are the two Come routes on. that Pan Am is going to expand from. Pan Am starts in Miami. So from Miami, we're going to go along the dotted route yep. and the zigzaggy the route, which have names triangle. which I don't have memorized. Yeah, so but you're going to grab gonna a Pan Am token. Yep, so you'll grab one of the yellow, uh, sorry, white and blue Pan Am tokens, place it on that route. Yep, perfect. Yep. And then along with the other one. So we had the dots the and the zigzags. Yep. The, the, you know, the very technical Perfect. terms. Now, Pan Am owns, owns those routes for forever and always. You can never claim those routes again. If a player had uh, one of their planes on those routes, Pan Am would have purchased that route. In the bottom left-hand corner of the board, you can see um, the amount that Pan Am will buy your, your routes for. So if they buy a one value route, it's $5, five monies, not dollars. Uh, and then it goes up from there. So the longer the route, the more money they will pay for it. And then you would get that plane back. So that was the expansion. Now everyone gets their income based on their income tracker on the board. So yeah. gray will get one, yellow will get two, green will get two, and red, sorry, you get zip. <laughs> And uh, just because we're running out of time, I just want to make sure at the end of this yep. phase, we all get to buy stocks starting in turn order at four dollars. Yep. And so, yep. which is um, exactly where we are. So right now, everyone gets to buy stock as much as they want uh, that they can afford. They might want to save some money for the next round. Um, and that's a full yep. round. And then at this point, the first round. player marker would go to the player on the left. You would reveal the next round event. The stock market would change. Uh, some events can um, uh, hinder you, give you an advantage, right? So the stock price would go to five. Each player gets a free destination card from the deck, and Pan Am would expand once. And that's Pan Am. So there's seven rounds. So you can see it's very approachable, very simple to pick up. Yes. There's a lot of depth and strategy that you can uh, execute against. And, and you said this is available now. You can find it in Target. Uh, yep. Already out there, right? In the world. You oh, yeah. Buy it. Yeah, it's out. You can <laughs> buy it at Target right now. It'll come to your uh, friendly local uh, game store in uh, the fall. So, you know, if you want to make sure that your store has it, be sure they contact their rep that uh, purchases from Funko and make sure that they get their inventory because this is. No joke, you guys. This is it's the game really of the year. solid. It's it's a yeah. really solid game. Um, I had a great time playing it. I got extremely lucky, and uh, so <laughs> maybe I love it because I won. <laughs> <laughs> it, it always makes it feel a little bit better when you win, right? <laughs> I mean, I had a great time playing this, so I would highly recommend it. Check it out today. Uh, this was Pan Am. Thank you very much, Adam, for joining me. And fun games. Thank you.